Hey everybody, this is Rido, and we are doing the Steam Spring Cleaning uh, Fall List Cleanup. I could go into a long explanation, but you could go back to the first episode where we covered games starting with the letter A for most of it. The short of it is, I have a fall list. It includes a lot of games that I'm considering putting on a wish list, which, and the wish list, of course, is the list of games I'm considering purchasing and covering on my YouTube channel. Uh, in the last episode, I said I was streaming live. I didn't hit the right button, so I'm not streaming live. More's the better. That was a pretty awful uh, episode. Probably just really, really bad for for a lot of reasons. But the main reason being. Uh, right now, 87% of my 16 gigabytes of RAM is being used to have all of these Chrome tabs open. But things are fixed. You can see now on this game, Bacterium, which was not the game I said we were going to start with. There was another B game. It was Backgammon uh, Chess and Checkers, I believe is the exact name of it. It's a VR game. It's not very good. I took it off the... Uh, off the fall list uh, we did manage however to achieve the stated goal in the last recording which is to add a lot of things to the wish list if they are good enough if they have the qualifications either by having some kind of appeal and maybe less than 20 reviews that are positive or overall positive i'm not looking for 20 positive reviews i'm looking for at least 20 reviews from somebody who bought it from Steam, which is what this means. This isn't all the reviews on Steam, it's just the verified purchases from Steam. And so we're looking for something that says positive, overall positive. This game here is is mixed. Uh, bacterium, it's not likely to make it to the wish list, so at this point, it will, needs to be removed from the follow list, which is, yeah, how this goes. What this game looks like to me uh, is something somewhat similar to a DS and Wii game um, where you played as a doctor and the doctor had like some magical powers. Uh, I think it was called Trauma Surgeon, I believe was the name of it. It was pretty good, never came to PC. I don't know if it would really ever work without the Wii movements or being being able to swipe on a touchscreen on the DS. So uh, it didn't certainly sell gangbusters. It was a niche Japanese title uh, from, I believe, Atlas. So this looks somewhat similar to this, although... In all honesty, this might just be a shoot em, shooter game, uh, just taking place inside of a body instead of in space, which even that is slightly interesting. Uh, they want $12.99, which is pretty expensive. Uh, I would say this thumbnail, too, uh, is a little off, uh, off tone. Because you have like one character, that, and what you're seeing a little bit of each character's face, one character that's very soft and tonal, and then this next character next to him, it's uh, not anywhere like that. And then this next character is just a straight up anime girl, and then this guy is a straight up anime, anime guy, and then you're back to anime girl, and then you're back into... Uh, to more realistic looking uh, designs. Also, if we were to look at the eyes, you've got a, a pretty big eye here, pretty big eye here, pretty tiny eye here. I'm about a uh, pretty big eye here, pretty tiny, tiny eye here, tiny eye here. It just feels like several different animators worked on the game and, and that's just off model. That's weird. Um, and this is an English and simplified Chinese game, which, uh, sadly, there's just so many low effort games that come out of China, particularly since China stopped allowing games to be on their, uh, released in China unless they're approved. 
So we've, we've seen over the last few months quite a large increase in just poor quality games. Now, in all fairness, this would not be an example of that because, well, this actually would be an example of that still because they were not approving any games even back as far as December 12th, 2018. Uh, and yes, we're considering everything that ha came out before January 1st, even if it has less than 20 reviews. So that's the brief setup. Uh, we may, I may mention some more things and let me just remind myself how we're going to do this. If I leave a tab open, that means it's getting removed. So I just need to hit control tab and move over to the next game. So now we're looking at Baldur's Gate 2, the Enhanced Edition. Now the thing here, and I guess I'm going to have to give up on this idea, is I kind of don't think I'd ever play the Baldur's Gate series. The reason for it is it is a Diablo isometric RPG game, and I don't think it's terrible or anything, but there's a lot of them. Uh, that exist and it just keeps going and it keeps going and I'm fairly certain some of these are good and some of them aren't so good uh, and I just just kind of don't believe I'd ever bite on that worm as it were uh, so that being said I guess it's good good enough quality that I might consider playing Baldur's Gate 1 but then the question would be can I get to Baldur's Gate 1 like if I click this will the page actually load alright I will put Baldur's Gate 1 and this is how I often decide these things is just play the put the first game in the wish list if you play the first game and find it's actually successful and, and interesting, then then start thinking about playing the sequels. Uh, but this game is just so old. <laughs> and I know this release date says 2013, but I don't believe that is the ac actual original release date of Baldur's Gate. I think the enhanced edition since the original release in 1998. So... You're talking uh, 20 years, 21 years, 21 year old game, if my math is right. That's really, really old. Uh, and in all fairness, if I was going to play something like Diablo, I think I'd probably play Diablo. Although Activision Blizzard, in all fairness, also is is not doing too hot right now. So it, it might not be very relevant to play an Activision Blizzard game. Particularly since they're not on Steam. They're all on the Battle.net launcher. Uh, I suppose it is worth mentioning that we are also... Uh, I'm recording this on... Uh, Memorial Day in the United States, so uh, this is right during the spring steam spring cleaning event, which really wasn't about selling games as much as it was just about getting people to play their old games and prepare themselves for spending money during the steam summer sale. And uh, that is exactly what I'm doing now is preparing myself for the steam summer sale. Uh, so here we have a game called Bargain Hunter. Now, I like this idea as a simulation game where you would be picking up antiques and garbage and, well, not they don't call it garbage, they call it junk, and trying to auction it. Uh, this might be a pretty randomized game, though. So you might buy a violin one time and it sells for ten dollars you might buy the exact same violin a second time and it sells for a thousand dollars there might be very little uh, little here uh, 
This is twelve dollars in ninety nine cents, and it was last updated January twenty fourth. So it's it's been about six months, but that that doesn't mean anything alone. Games can just be finished, and you don't have to update them anymore. Let's see. The one review we have here is this game is strangely addictive. Not sure how many hours I put in it. 40 to 60 range. Well, according to this guy, he only played 11 and a half hours. It's difficult to find the right thing to buy and sometimes a crap shoot at auction, but you eventually win what usually sells for a good price. Watch out for counterfeit merch, although it is near impossible as far as I can tell to know before you buy it. On the story, why I can't stop why I stopped playing I can't remake it uh, it took going bankrupt several times to figure out which items were, were more reliable to sell the auction future furniture chest such culture once I figured it out it was pretty easy to maintain and slowly build my bankroll as you have bills that pop up sporadically electricity foods blah 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 let's see it's an endless clicker frustration simulator this game uh, if you like an endless clicker frustration simulator and then we have a positive review it's a fun game but it can get repetitive for people because you'll get a lot of the same items to buy or not to buy and this guy got it for free so why should I listen to his review he didn't even have to put his money up hmm. good idea bad implementation generally when I look at reviews I, I think it is worth pointing out here uh, that uh, I only look at negative reviews. I kind of don't care what a positive person has, has to say because they clearly not run into any problems or complaints. Uh, so it seems like we have a very solid percentage of negative reviews for the seven user reviews that were here saying the game is just poorly balanced and poorly implemented and it would just be a nightmare to play. And that's a shame. There's not really too much like this. Although, I guess since this uh, game came out, House Flipper has come out. And House Flipper is mostly positive, And it is almost a s the same thing. I I'd say it's several steps away. Or PC Building Simulator is somewhat still in early access. And and then development or even two point hospital uh arguably is the same kind of money management sim so bargain hunter i just don't think it's a hidden gem so next we have a game called battle for corson uh which this is probably a real battle that happened in world war ii that being said i don't know anything about it I'm not a super fan of war games, uh, but if there was a really good one and one that could be slightly educational, I might be willing to do that. On the other hand, I might be willing to play something like Sniper Elite where you're put, putting in a lot more gameplay and less uh, historical accuracy. Uh, Maybe I'm wrong about Sniper Elite in that description. There's nothing visually attractive here. and So it's it doesn't have anything that attracts me as far as I can tell. It doesn't have enough user reviews to, to really be relevant. It's bundled, which is a red flag of several red flags you could have. Uh, I would also be a little wary of a game that supported Russian and was built around World War II as Russian troll games uh, are a problem. Several other stuck countries make troll games also, but Russian troll games are quite prevalent. Uh, and that doesn't even inherently assume that it is a actual Russian person making the Russian troll games. It could just be 4chan making them all for all I know. This is another game that doesn't need to stay on the follow list. Uh, next we have this game Battle Squares, which 
looks a little bit like Mario Party and looking for Mario Party equivalents uh, or or clones is something I would like to find that being said this texture and these skins are almost certainly unity assets that have just been bought and it seems like it's pretty repetitive even at that three uh, three user reviews this came out in August of 2018 it's still being sold as an early access game uh, it says a patch uh, came out in May 14th so somebody is still working on this but I don't know six months of early access I think at that point you've you've dropped the ball and uh, it doesn't need to stay on the follow list if this game came out uh, this game came came out out of earlier access and was a complete product I think somebody would start reviewing it that being said because it's still in early access he is they are capable of using Steam's review system kind of against the reviewers uh, because every early access review kind of gets subjugated to to the bottom and not shown as soon as it comes out of early access so even though these are positive reviews they won't be seen as soon as they get more reviews and are out of early access uh, you can also see some of these people receive the game for free um, and so here's somebody that's saying straight up that their friends uh, are reviewing it which sure it makes a lot of sense that people who got a game for free would review it positively uh, there's a game called Yandere Simulator that has been basically eternally in development and will never be finished and this feels very much like they've been given more than enough time to finish the product and get to a 1.0 version instead of a 0.54 version uh, so another game that can just leave uh, next we have beat blocks VR now music oriented VR games at this point I think are far too much a dime a dozen and Beat Saber is really the only VR music game that you should play I would think um, this is kind of an interesting idea where you're playing a 3d Tetris game and grabbing the pieces and trying to make a cube uh, but I'm almost certainly never gonna get a VR headset this is still early access from November and uh, the price is kind of cheap at eight dollars and ninety nine cents uh, and updating weekly leaderboards to make it look like you're actually still working on the game is not acceptable uh, yeah and quite frankly this is such a simplistic idea there's no reason that this game should have ever been in early access I I hold the standard incredibly high as far as what games really would deserve to be in early access and what games wouldn't if your game is not heavily multiplayer uh, which is looking at this game it's only single player you probably have no business doing early access at all but that's just not it at, at least if you're making a single player only game be honest and, and try to sell it episodically instead where you, you're admitting that it's an unfinished project and you need to make money before you can finish the product uh, but yeah I don't even know why some of these games are on the wish list the uh, well the follow list clearly what happened is I've I in quite a few times run out of emotional energy to make decisions and because of that I will just err on the side of caution and put games that really shouldn't have met my standards also six months has passed so uh, my standards very well have changed and uh, I'm now holding it up to a higher standard so 
this game is a student project. It's class of 2018, Brigham Young University, and so the college has started publishing for the self Steam Direct $100 fee all the games that these students are making. Hopefully, this doesn't mean that Brigham Young is claiming the copyright on the students' projects and and s selling them for money. I don't believe I've seen anything from Brigham Young that wasn't free, uh, which clears off that. The problem here is only 60% of people like this game, this beatboxers music rhythm fighting game that combines uh, playing on the beat kind of like Cro Necro Crypt of the Necro Dancer and a fighting game. Uh, but as a student project, this one actually should stay on the follow list or the wish list. Um, actually, I should. Yeah, it's free, so if I put it on the wish list, uh, I'll never find it. So that's why I'm leaving it on the follow list. Uh, but yeah, I do want to show off some of the student projects, although I may very well run into a point where I only have enough time to show them off like I've shown them off here and and not as actually playing them. Next we have a game called Below, which is a solitary journey through a haunted depths of a forbidden isle. And it's so much better now that we can see the screenshots. I fixed a lot of things. I can now highlight text and it won't go blurry with the censorship blur until I'm way further to the left of the screen. Uh, so I can easily copy the text and not blur it. Uh, but yeah, things are running a lot smoother, and that's good. Now, for this game, we have 69% versus 75% in the last 30 days. Only 12 people reviewed it in the last 30 days, whereas 481 people reviewed it earlier. I wouldn't be surprised if people didn't like this game because they got it kind of for free. Or if they didn't like it because it seemed like it was a different style of game and it was being advertised wrong. You can certainly do a lot of damage to your um, to your product if you just advertise it wrong. Rage 2 recently came out and it advertised itself as something it really wasn't. And that led to some disappointment. So if we just come over here and look at the 150 negative ones. Cheap death backtrack re rinse repeat terrible game design tries to cash in on a souls like trend but implements elements of souls in the way worst way possible tries to be hardcore but only ends up being tedious and let's see this is April this is May uh, couldn't get past how slow the pacing is at start takes a good couple minutes every time you die just to get to the point where you can start playing again that's not a good combination with insta kill spike traps yeah I've heard enough frankly uh, but you certainly don't see insta kill spike traps in these screenshots in fact you the screenshots actually suffer quite a bit for not showing you anything uh, and this is a screenshot that I call dark screenshot syndrome <laughs> where there's just a lot of darkness here and I I could not tell you if this is some kind of alien or monster that you're fighting and you're standing here shooting something at it or if this is a top-down game uh, perspective and this is just some kind of wall or mountainside from what I'm saying and then when you look at something like this it's, is this the character you're playing as there's literally nothing else on the screen. Um, and I don't always hate when games have no UI. And I definitely hate when games have too much UI, but when you just have nothing going on. So, this is yet another game that is not to make it to the wish list. We may find that all the games starting with B aren't going to make it to the wish list. That. That's fine. There's plenty of games already on the wish list starting with the letter B, and, and I certainly have no obligation 
to play some play games based on their alphabetical name. That's just how things got sorted. Hmm. So this looks like a text-based game for the most part. Um, where you get to choose the events on branching paths, but it's mostly just text. Uh, it seems like maybe you ro walk around a pre-designed world so that you can maybe trigger the next bit of text. Also seems like maybe this is a bit of a horror game where you're going to be wandering around and getting jump scared. One thing I will say is that this is a different art style than the hyper-realistic uh, asset flip horror games look like these days. Uh, it is going for more of a low polygon look. And this came out on September 12th of 2018. It's $5.99. Let's see what the reviews say. Although I recall writing paper on gothic literature in college, I can't recall any hallmarks of the genre. I thought the idea of rewriting the story was a neat one and was amused by the way some of the revisions were then featured in the game's environmentals. Uh, however, I had difficulty figuring out who was speaking during the game's vignettes and therefore had difficulty choosing exactly how I want to rewrite the situation. Uh, this is a long review, certainly. Hmm. So we have two positive reviews here and one positive review that's just a streamer linking to their video another review that's just a streamer linking to their video more reason not to follow uh, follow these kind of positive reviews hmm. I think this is just kind of a weak implementation and it seems like if we were going to go with a horror choices manner style game there's others that are being recommended here uh, so I think this game just does not fall into the relevant category with only three reviews since September of 2018 so it may be a hidden gem it just doesn't matter <laughs> that's really the the hardest thing to come to terms with frankly I would love to find all the hidden gems on Steam or just in computer gaming in general uh, or just hidden gems as far as games in general and cover them on my channel but it's not likely to happen they're hidden gems because of a reason and the reason often is is that nobody was interested enough to play them in the first place uh, i'm sure the library of congress has thousands of amazing novels that nobody's ever read or very few people have read uh, yet the shakespeare and the other classics get pushed over and over again because people read them or were forced to read them in school Next we have Beyond the Invisible Darkness game, which is a hidden object game. Uh, I have since sworn off playing hidden object games. Here's the telltale marker of a hidden object game, a list of things you have to find on the screen. Uh, and then it is pretty typical that in hidden object games they will try to polish it more. So they'll show uh, videos of uh, a video in the intro of the game uh, there is an engine that is pretty old to make hidden object games so it's actually relatively cheap to to make a game like this while doing very little art particularly if you take a scene like this and then split it amongst 20 different hidden object games because you can just co copy and paste it quite frankly $4.99 is not a bad job for a bad price for a hidden object game, but yeah. No more hidden objects. 
Next we have Beyond the Sky, which is a point and click with a female protagonist 2D adventure game. Um, now, what's weird is sometimes you'll see a game that's animated in a w weird way like this, and then it will be tagged sexual content and nudity, and you'll you'll think to yourself, how, like, how in the world is that going to work? And seems like it usually doesn't. This is quite the point and click. You're dragging and dropping a lot. I would say this animation style is borderline bad and borderline unique. Um, but quite frankly, I would like to see a lot more games drawn like this by aspiring game developers than have people go to the Unity Asset Store and just buy the same recognizable Roblox um, models over and over again uh, or some other character models that have become so prevalent and so obvious hmm. this game is $12.99 it has 8 reviews it came out in November of 2018 let's see what the reviews say recommended 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 let's see if there are any negative reviews at all no Okay, so you have 100% positivity on this. I'm also still very much a sucker for point-and-click adventures, so I see no reason not to add this one to the wish list, uh, which makes the second game that have made that has made it to the wish list. So we're well. It's not my main desire just to get car games off the follow list. It does go to show that my standards have improved and quite frankly a lot of the games I'm seeing on the follow list would not be even put on the follow list uh, when I'm looking at new games that come out every Monday Wednesday and Friday during my live streams uh, which I forgot to mention yes the whole reason the follow list is big in the first place is because I uh, uh, every Monday Wednesday and Friday I stream Hearthstone and look at all almost all the games that come out on Steam um, nearly all of them I skip over the bad ones at this point uh, there's so many terrible games started coming out uh, it became necessary uh, but yeah a lot of these games would not make it so Next, we have this game called Bazango Blast, which is a Happy Birds clone. Angry Birds clone. <laughs> Sorry, that's it's not Happy Bird, it's Angry Bird. Uh, there was a Happy Drinking Bird toy uh, that exists, but not a game. The thing that this fa fails at, in particular, is there are actually Angry Bird games on Steam. There's a VR game. I believe there's Angry Bird Space, which is slightly different, and I imagine there are other games that um, that would complete directly to this game and succeed a lot better. Uh, let's see if there's one even being recommended here. No. Let's see here's somebody that got it for free and they say it's not recommended uh, here's another one that bought it or activated it with a key and it's not recommended so yeah two negative reviews is enough to to make me in lose any interest in a clone game a game that's a clone of another game so let's move forward next we have a game called blue it is also possible, I guess, that some of the games we've we've looked at were also student projects, and that might have been the reason why I was uh, keeping them on the follow list. But quite frankly, if they're low quality student project work games, I don't want to cover that either. I, I would much prefer to only highlight really good student projects or at least decent student project games uh, that have something worth talking about. It's not very helpful to talk about a student project and say well the student project game is just exactly like every 
every other terrible student project game or every other terrible asset flip game on Steam. This game blue BL00 looks like it has mo made models or gotten models of several several any in 64 games like there's a character that looks like Bomberman from Bomberman 64 there was a character that looked like uh, one of the the enemies in Mario 64 so you're really feeling his inspiration or or possibly his plagiarism uh, at, at this point a fast-paced 3d platformer I would say that Steam does need more Mario 64 clone games. Uh, pla you get into a weird point where you look, look for platformers. There's actually a lot of platformers, but none of them are really good. That would be equivalent to a Super Mario Bros. 3 or a Super Mario Bros. 1 even. Um, I think looking at this... There's no reason why this should be uh, on the follow list. Now that being said, this came out in May 9th, 2019, which is, it's not even supposed to be here. This I missed this game somehow. Uh, I normally would give things more time to see if people liked it. So I don't think it would be a big burden just to leave this on the with on the fall list uh, but I, I kind of doubt that this game will make it and the thing I would say now is we have a hat in time on S Steam so if you want to play a 3d platformer that's inspired by uh, Super Mario 64 I think a hat in time is very much uh, one to choose here we have Black Mesa. The problem with Black Mesa is it's in early access. I refuse to play any game that's not out of early access. I will suppose uh, uh, applaud the Crowbar Collective who has permission from Valve to make this fan-made uh, remake of Half-Life uh, because certainly Valve is not going to do it. Uh, I'll, I'll applaud them for being in early access for the right reasons though they are actually working on remastering the original game that being said I've never played any of the Half-Life games I'm not sure I ever really want to because they're never gonna wrap up and the biggest thing that I think Black Mesa could do as a recreation of the first game would be give a satisfactory ending to the Gordon Freeman story and just be done with it. Um, D, as a fan game, removed from canon Half-Life 2 and Half-Life 2 Episode 1 or Half-Life 2 Episode 2 uh, and any important characters or events just to integrate that into your remake. But that would also leave their game in early access for longer. Uh, there's definitely some weirdness and I could go on a long rant on how uh, Valve has this weird libertarian opinion on how to run a business and thus they can't effectively govern themselves. and take that as a statement towards the the uh, the political ideas of libertarian however you want uh, uh, but uh, yes they they have nobody that claims to be in charge at Valve except for Gabe Newell claims to be the, the main boss for the most part and that's that's kind of it and then it's a completely flat structure where you have to convince people to work with you and you're you can't allocate or force any employees or resources towards your game so their re Valve's latest release artifact basically had no advertising budget had nobody working on artifact that didn't want to be working on artifact and thus it should have been a at least moderately successful um, 
hack and uh, card collectible card game is what artifact is I'm looking at a hack and slash game uh, but it wasn't and now it's all but probably abandoned even though they claim to still be working on it well this game blade and sorcery looks bloody in fact at this point for YouTube it very possibly would be too bloody uh, with YouTube wanting to be more family friendly uh, so this is still early access this came out December 11th 2018 and I uh, just don't I'm gonna skip over the screenshot in case that's a new female character model I don't know if it is or not I don't think this game succeeds because you have Mordhal right now being the the spiritual successor from the creators of chivalry uh, a spiritual successor of the game chivalry so this just kind of falls apart uh, that being said for a VR game this this is probably pretty polished if it was out of early access and if people were reviewing it pretty well uh, they are saying very positive things uh, but yeah if I was gonna buy a, a VR game I don't think I need this on the fall list just because just in case I get a VR headset which I'll probably not get particularly since it's it's been given it six months to come out of early access I don't think you need to be in early access any longer than that uh, that's my line in the sand I'm gonna draw next we have blade line VR which looks like it is a Beat Saber style game and most VR games do end up really just being standing in one place either shooting things or cutting things or standing in one place and throwing things uh, it, which in all honesty if if your controller or, or your game console only had three types of games you would not be very satisfied for that variety and I'm not very satisfied with VR for its lack of variety of games or just gameplay methods yeah doesn't look like there's anything here of any interest it's mixed reviews so we could go back and go down and read the reviews uh, but why not play super hot VR instead that you're basically doing the same and that's a much better known VR game why not play Beat Saber then you you have musical movement where you're swinging swords uh, the games being recommended here are definitely better choices uh, this is that blade and sorcery game we just looked at so it is also recommending it or Arizona Sunshine was a game that wouldn't load in the last recording so I guess we could click on it and show it but it is just a zombie VR game uh, where zombies run towards you and shoot them so yeah the there is a whole collection of better VR titles being shown here. Uh, so this can leave the fall list. Next we have Blake and Mortimer The Curse of the 30 Denarii. It's a hidden object game. And I guess I thought this was more of an adventure game. Uh, but I guess even if it is an adventure game, uh, it kind of doesn't matter. So, like, even if this is mislabeled as a hidden object game, which it very well might be. This seems like a very old game with not any real relevancy for being an old game. Uh, because I certainly didn't play this when I was a kid. I've never heard of... Blake and Mortimer, The Curse of the 30 Denarii. There's no bundle here talking about it. Uh, there's no indication. 
Simple and intuitive hidden object gameplay, interactive inventory, a range of mini games. Hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's no reason to beat around the bush that that's just another game not making it to the fall list. Almost all the games are not making it to the fall list, which is great. If the fall list only has 20 games on it, uh, by the time we are done, that will be excellent. And, frankly, by, by the time December rolls around, I imagine the fall list will build up. Uh, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I, I tend to add three or four games back to the fall list. So it is going to completely continue to uh, build. This this one needs to stay on the fall list. It is rated positively. It's over 20 reviews. It shouldn't actually be under consideration again because it came out in 2019. I must have ta control tabbed through a lot of tabs. The, the problem with this is it's chapter one, so it's episodic whether they want to admit it or not. It's also VR. It does look like it is a Jurassic Park simulator, for lack of a better term, where you're shooting dinosaurs and you're on rails. And an on-rail shooter is a better experience than, than just standing in one place and having dinosaurs run at you uh, because the background and the scenery is changing. So this, this actually looks rather good. I kind of wish... Uh, that you could play something like this outside of VR um, but also the game time is only 10 minutes and you'd probably be better playing it on Springboard VR which apparently is a service and then also you should probably buy a PP gun uh, or a Vive Tracker, or a Sodom Sensory Gun. I think this is supposed to say, which supports some auto sensory gun, and they just didn't type it right. Oh man, well, $2.99 for 10 minutes in VR. This is kind of the level of quality you get for VR. It does not look bad, but clearly this entire auto rail is ex uh, on rails experience is just a 10 minute ride and that's it. Uh, it's probably not even randomized. That being said, I think a lot of arcade or arcade shooter games were probably only uh, an hour or so long if you didn't die all the time because the games were designed to cheat you out of quarters. Moving on, we have Blind. Now, the problem with Blind in games where you play as a blind character is that quite a few of them came out at the same time. This came out September uh, 18th, 2018. It is rated mostly positive, 77% positive. And some of the games had echolocation abilities like this that would fill in quite a lot where I've seen other uh, other games that have very little echolocation uh, fill in and this is a horror game where what you might be seeing might not be the truth at all uh, so it works its way into that but this is a VR game too uh, I don't know why these games don't want to, uh, to just sell more, quite frankly. It, it would be better if there was a non-VR version of this. Um, and what's not happening in the community, none of these pictures are loading, unfortunately. I probably could just reload the tab and it would probably show fine. But what what's not happening here is we're not getting such a massive quality of games that VR makes sense because VR is so incredibly expensive. Uh, if you buy a cheap one, maybe you spend $200 for a VR headset and then you have to connect it to 
probably a $1,500 to $2,000 computer. If you uh, buy an expensive one, you might be spending $1,000 in accessories just to enable the VR on top of a two, possibly $3,000 computer at that top of the line. Uh, the PlayStation VR is probably the best and cheapest option to do but then also the PlayStation 5 is not launching with any kind of upgrade to its VR setup so it's going to be stagnant if not completely abandoned I suppose this game stays on the fall list it meets meets the requirements but it's a VR game and VR games don't make it to the wish list so I'll just close that tab and then because these are alphabetical we have Blind Girl as the next game. This is an RPG Maker Story Rage. Oh, it's tagged RPG Maker games. Uh, I basically hate RPG Maker games. Not because you can't make a good game with RPG Maker. You probably can't make a very good game with it, quite frankly. Even if you're using the new version MX. Um, but... The problem is, it's just too easy to make a game uh, with RPG Maker, so people make terrible, terrible games and try to sell them. This, in no way, looking at this video though, looks like an RPG Maker game. It, it really doesn't. It, this looks like some other programming engine or custom code to make a point and click adventure of sorts where you're picking up different items and you're interacting with the environment on the screen uh, now this does looking at this video look like it's kind of an older more simplistic game because it has black bars on the sides uh, but it doesn't look terrible it also looks like it's a weird kind of Japanese game and I am definitely a fan of weird Japanese games um, so is there anything to really take from this that would scare me away not really six dollars and 99 cents might be a little expensive it's a visual novel adventure game. I, I would say it barely even falls into the visual novel category for what's being shown. Because uh, it doesn't look like it has much text. It's English only, so uh, I think this is coming from the mind of just a Westerner. Who's probably been slightly inspired by it. Hmm. Let's see if we browse all the reviews um, let's see and then all languages you're seeing there's quite a few Asian languages here which is odd considering how the game says it's in English only and yet all these people are writing in either Chinese or Japanese or Korean um, this kind of looks Korean for the most part in the writing but I could be wrong about that uh, so the question comes down to should I risk six dollars and ninety nine cents on this game and put it on the wish list and I think the answer to that is yes this this is weird this might be a hidden gem it's probably not super long it's not asking for a lot of money relatively speaking particularly if I got it on sale this is the kind of game I'd like to see for like three dollars and ninety nine cents or less uh, and sadly sales just don't happen as often as they used to uh, so they don't get that cheap anymore. Uh, but yeah, this feels like something that I could probably play as a filler game during the month of October as a Halloween game. 
as something spooky. Uh, and yeah, we'll just leave it at that. Let's see. Uh, next we have Blitzkeep Unleashed, which came out in October. Let's see, it says it's a billiards meets roguelike RPG. So I think what you do as a character is you you bounce yourself around trying to hit the enemies which is a funny idea I think for a second but when you actually try to implement it in reality it's probably super annoying and really bad experience it seems like the video that they're showing right now even shows in their best case scenario the characters are the player is losing pretty fast and that might be the intention uh, is that you will lose rather fast um, if i wanted to play billiards there are several good billiards games on steam if I wanted to play a kind of grindy hack and slash RPG, which is what this is, there's thousands of kind of grindy ha hack and slash RPGs. So th this is combining two things that probably should not be combined and it's not showing me anything interesting. What's funny is it says it, it was coming out early 2018 in that video. This release date was October 2018 which by no definition is realistically early and then it is still in early access over six months later for $8.99 um, yeah this game has been given its chance and it should be removed let's see next we have Blocken let's see what this is a minimalistic puzzle game with inhabitants that are dense so they follow you around in, in over 60 puzzles and you have to manipulate the people uh, almost certainly I've seen mini games like this in other games where you're controlling people the one user review might be the only way to work around this this is what I typically describe as a one screen unity game it's my guess that it's designed in unity and they can't program to make the screen scroll or they uh, also you have a pause screen here and a rewind button that makes it feel a little bit like a mobile game uh, but yeah this is not terrible, but these also were probably just Unity assets that were pre-bought. Not that you really would have needed to do more if you just wanted to make a puzzle game. Uh, 60 puzzles or 60 arenas. So what's the one review? It's your typical wall wall-to-wall -wall movement in a few in as few movements as possible situation um, this is if you like this check out the steam group puzzle lovers it offers nothing that can't be found elsewhere often cheaper let's see really bad port of a mobile game trash game with achievements so nobody's having fun with it it does have six achievements but so it might be a little bit of an achievement game but I wouldn't really call it that if if it really takes 60 puzzles to solve to get all six achievements that that's probably not an achievement game but yeah the re reviews of which there are more than one so apparently only one person down here didn't activate it with a key uh, here is the one person who activated it and bought it from Steam directly so this is the one review that's being counted and you see how easy it is to manipulate the system it's just somebody put emojis of four stars and a thumbs up they played it for less than an hour 
and that is the one that's counted whereas the three out of the remaining out of the remaining four reviews are negative so yes this is fall this is being removed from the follow list uh, next we have blood day indie horror game first person it's waiting for you uh, I don't know why I would have even had this on the follow list my standards must have been really really low at the time to put this and yeah any video game that has streamers on their video is definitely trying to sell itself perhaps that video was not there when I first saw it I could see myself seeing just these screenshots and being very generous and putting it on the follow list because of these screenshots but also uh, if you just look at these screenshots there's nothing on screen you just have what looks like a health bar and that's it there's no enemies there's no items to interact with there's no puzzles uh, this is 61 percent positive and i'm not even that happy with it it's a dollar and 99 cents uh, and this is really a great example of a game that should have never been on the fall list in the first place and the type of games that were until a few months ago highly prevalent on steam like every day you would get two three horror games coming out and now they've moved on to maybe making jigsaw puzzle games or slide puzzle games or uh, lewd games sex games uh, who knows where the people decided to go uh, next we have blood fresh supply this came out March 9th and it's already rated extremely positive now the weird thing here is this is from Night Dive Studios Night Dive Studios is known for taking old games and re-releasing them so this is basically a doom uh, clone for lack of a better term and there there was an original game called blood and this has been replaced uh, recently I tried to play the original Doom games and they made me incredibly motion sick and frankly this game is just so gory and, and lacks relevancy I don't think I really need to put it on the follow list or the wish list it's, it's actually just I think th there's probably a great resurgence of people of games like this for people who want to go back and play old doom clones or new doom clones uh, the doom mod doom sigil is just about to be released as of this recording so that would be another one to go back and play but I think for me personally this is where I get off the train uh, this is not not my bag I, I, I'm not precious about it I'm perfectly fine to play doom or anything like doom uh, in the highly graphic violent games but i i don't like the old school texture polygons of it that make me motion sick and i, I don't like mindless rounding around 3d mazes and i don't like mindless shooting the same characters over and over again that being said this is 88 percent positive so people of who are fans of these genres seem to really really love this and so good for them I'm glad that they can find something that makes them happy uh, next we have a game called bloodlust 2 nemesis which makes me wonder where bloodlust 1 went as far as the game it is a hack and slash dungeon crawler action RPG often you'll see in descriptions where they just are describing multiple multiple things that would be tags in the game um, this game came out before they announced um, the new uh, vampire the masquerade bloodlines 2 game that's in development uh, this does kind of feel like it is somewhat of an asset flip game where you're just ru running around slicing and dicing people killing vampires 
or acting as a vampire I'm not even sure um, let's see well while I'm watching this video I, the question is how much is here that's good it's 83 percent positive so I, I think this probably is a game where you would have to just decide that it could be good. That being said, it's still in early access from six months ago. Um, and so I think at this point you would need to give up on this. I guess the first game was called Bloodless Shadow Hunter. Um, and almost certainly this is a, um, this is the original idea of the game, and that's why it was popular. That being said, I recently played this and found this game rather disappointing, and it's marked very popular, so reviews don't mean everything. Um, I think... What's not being said here is that there's uh, there's probably some fetishist uh, elements being added here for fun and kind of like the adult Skyrim mods that can be found uh, at what is the name of that site? Lover's Lamp, I think. So, yeah. The first game is mostly positive at 264 reviews. This one is still in development. Do I have a justification to put this on the follow list or leave it on the follow list? Or would it be more logical to just click this and see what the game looked like? Uh, the original game looked like because this one came out in 2015 and I guess the idea would be why not play a finished product in that is the first in the series and see how that works for you T making a vampire game and making a dungeon crawler around it I think is probably a bad choice uh, let's see but maybe that works so here's what I think I'll do I'll put this on the uh, follow list the first game in the series I'll put it on the wish list and then I will know in the back of my head the Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2, which might be a good game, might not, we don't have a clue until it comes out, is out there. But one thing we can certainly say is Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 is going to have a lot more uh, budget behind it than this game did. And uh, $12.99, it's not incredibly expensive, but it's a little expensive for what is a questionable dungeon crawler at best but I think that's the best I can do for now now here comes the hard decision and I, I have to say what's good for the goose is good for the gander and as, for, as much as I would love to leave a anime visual novel on the fall list this has been also given six months and sure I could make a complaint and a a admits that Japanese developers tend to delay the development of their games all the time uh, but this is uh, not a developer or a publisher I've ever heard of uh, this is clearly a visual novel hurl uh, horror style game hmm. it's not tagged with any nudity or sexual content it, so 
who knows if it's censored or not. I wouldn't be surprised if there is some level of censorship in this release compared to another release somewhere else. Uh, Bloody Chronicles New Cycle of Death. It's still early access. This is our first project, which is why we want to know the opinions of users and also ask them for help in the development of the project. Approximately how long will it be uh, in early access until mid-February 2019. So they, they even they said that it was going to be out of early access by now. Um, so, yeah. There's no getting around it. This game needs to leave the follow list like any other. And that's fine too because there's plenty of visual novels on Steam. Visual novels are by far the best selling category uh, to many Westerners surprise. So yeah. Here we have a game called Blueprint, Blueprint Word Classroom. This, this looks like an interesting puzzle concept where you have to use the gears to spin letters around and spell things. It looks a lot like Magnum Opus if Magnum Opus was around the concept of spelling words instead of around the concept of uh, making shapes or alchemy combinations which is what I believe Magnum Opus is around and I would say that this is more of a puzzle game where Magnum Opus is more of a programming game being depicted through a puzzle uh, this has four user reviews it came out on December 5th 2018 it's $1.99 so it's certainly not asking a lot um, and apparently there's another game called Blueprint Word uh, just blueprint word. Let's see. Let's see. What does the review say? Hmm. Positive. 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 Brain teaser. Positive. 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 Well, this looks good to me. Um, although. In all fairness, I should be adding this one to the wish list, not the second one. So I'm going to take this title and add it to the list as far as games that should be added to the list. Although, I guess at that point I kind of need to go back and back. So we're doing a trade here. I will remove Blueprint Word Classroom from the fall list, play the original game in the series, which seems to be fine, or if I ever get around to purchasing it. It is worth mentioning and pointing out just because something makes it to the wish list does not mean that it is really that close towards people, towards me actually purchasing it. There's at least a thousand games on my wish list and uh, unless the game is on sale and at a very heavy discount or there's some other factor, a lot more consideration still has to be done when a sale happens. Next we have this game called Bold Blade, which is a RPG where your character spins around in circles and eventually you buy bigger swords spin around the circles and kill everything which is kind of a funny idea but I don't think you can go too far f past that initial joke um, to do anything else um, so it probably would get rather repetitive pretty easily it's seven dollars and 99 cents let's see if what the reviews say recommended um, let's see. Let's see. Here's the not recommended review, which is the one that I want to read. I want to like this game. I bought it after finishing a run in Ger with of Geronimo Sword, thinking it would scratch the same itch. 
and in some ways it does you can make the sword big and attacking mechanics are slightly more involved but you can beat it in under an hour there's no elemental damage or and minimal enemy variety the good psi powers are redundant by the time you get them and multiple achievements are straight broken refusing to unlock even under when you satisfy the condition steer clear so you know 40 achievements this is probably an achievement game yep and it's really not a big loss to lose a game like this so let's move on next we have bomb chicken which I was probably a little iffy on but seeing that it is 96% positive this looks like it works it's a chicken that lays bombs instead of eggs and then you can make a tower of the bombs to either gain height or to uh, push an entire tower of bombs around and it seems like it's a slightly fast-paced strategy platforming puzzle game uh, if anything it might be a little too challenging um, but yeah this this looks good it looks different it looks varied it's fourteen dollars and ninety nine cents that's a little disheartening this is not a game I would want to pay fourteen dollars and ninety nine cents for but people are very happy with with it so that's good enough to put it on the wish list and so there it goes like I am still waiting for the time in which somebody points out that I have odd or bad taste for games and that I have a bunch of odd games on the wish list and sure yeah my wish list is full of a bunch of odd games because I either own most AAA games or have no interest in playing a AAA game. If you're into Call of Duty style first person military shooters, I don't think uh, I would ever cover those kind of games. So uh, we, you either are going to have to watch my channel to learn about some new games or, or just find a different streamer. Uh, next we have a game here called Bomb Royale, which has Royale in the name quite early at December 12th, 2018. This is a Bomberman clone. There are quite a few Bomberman clones that come out. Uh, frankly, you get one at least once a month. And this, this came out in December 12th and has zero reviews. It's still in early access. So... It's got two strikes immediately. Nobody wants to play it, and it's still in early access, so moving on. Next, we have Bon Voyage, and is this a free early access game? Yes. This is another student game uh, from Breda University of Applied Sciences. I don't know where Breda is. It sounds like maybe a Caribbean. Uh, country or city it looks a lot like the point-and-click adventure game that they made after full throttle uh, LucasArts made what what was the name of that game um, well the main characters was death and he went by the name Manny um, and it was a LucasArts game hmm. but I think it had it, oh it was Grim Fandango is the name of it it looks a lot like Grim Fandango um, so yeah this looks cool it's still early access I'll leave it, I suppose. I suppose they're still working on it. Uh, and it's free and it's a student project, so I'm going to cut them some slack. Also, as a student project, if you take a look here, there's quite a lot of animation going on. Inherently, I think colleges are going to have to, to come to a realization that if they want to put out these games in 
a unfinished project uh, style because they the students move on or graduate you probably need one graduating class to hand off the project to the next graduating cl class or at least some of the students of the next graduating class to continue to work on it or you're, you're gonna have to give some kind of grant from the college to the students to uh, have them continue to work on it uh, as a form of a side project or full-time employment even uh, this is really really ambitious for a student project game uh, most student project games I've seen don't look anything like this moving on we have a game called box it which came out in June 4th of 2018 this was a box pushing game that admittedly is just an asset flip like clearly I can almost guarantee you that this model was just bought from some place like the Unreal Store, the Unity Store, could be any storefront and any engine for all I know. And then I imagine the textures of these boxes were bought and these uh, hedges were bought. So it was a mostly copy and paste job. Uh, but they made 300 puzzles. I kind of would like... like to play this game but clearly nobody else does so um, and this is also an example of me trying to find a game that really would just be a mini game in an, in any other game like moving boxes out of the way would be an annoying mini game in a lot of action adventure games or point and click adventure games you do it once or twice in the entirety of the game and be frustrated by that point thinking about doing 300 of them would be a nightmare uh, the one review is uh, negative so yeah and the fact that you can buy the entire bundle for less than ten dollars is questionable to say the least so that's leaving the follow list Next we have Branching Pass. Now, is this the Japanese uh, live action game? I think this is. Okay. Hmm. So, I don't think there's any animation in this game at all. I think what happens, and if we get back around to the video, we'll see it, is everybody who worked on the game the programming it um, also acted as a character and the story is uh, or is this just a video let's just make sure this is actually a game no this is a video okay so I was confused for a second there clearly so this is a great example and a great point to, to point out what on this page tells you that this is a video instead of a game you're seeing footage of games here if we look here it says all videos um, it's tagged as a movie and a documentary here and I was not looking at that is being published by AGM Playism which is a game publisher um, there is no indication here of single player, multiplayer, or any features like that. Uh, is this video relevant to you? That's a slight hint. Languages wouldn't tell you anything. Resolution, aspect ratio, audio, and running time are all indicators. Uh, okay. But do I want to own, I guess this is the next question, do I want to own a... The reviews are exactly the same uh, as everything else, and you're getting recommended games and movies. Uh, I don't know how this got on my follow list. Maybe I thought I wanted to see this, but I would not in no way want to own a video on Steam. And Steam has severely reduced 
the videos that they offer on their storefront because it wasn't really successful and nobody was using it. Uh, so it's down to if you are selling a video game and there is a connecting story, say it's, um, it's a video game about uh, an anime TV show would be, I guess, the best connecting one is if it's a visual novel uh, like Clonad and you wanted to bundle the Clonad anime with that then that makes somewhat sense um, but even then I don't know if Steam would be super happy to support that so this needs to leave the follow list definitely I don't want to accidentally buy a video and, and kind of almost did uh, next we have Brave Earth Prologue, which looks like a Castlevania clone, and I've been, well, I was trying for a long time to play Castlevania games or find good Castlevania clones or Metroidvania games on Steam. I tried a few and at this point have, have taken a break uh, on that. Bloodstained Ritual of the Night is going to come out in a few days as of recording and uh, well I think a few days uh, so I think at that point I would maybe recommend if Bloodstained Ritual of the Night is good that that was probably the only Metroidvania Castlevania game that you need to play hmm Let's see. Five Years in the Making by Kayan, the creator of I Want to Be the Guy. I Want to Be the Guy being a game that made, got a lot of clones made of it. So this had a planned release date of 2018 and it's still not out. So the last update was in February 13th this game looks good it's just a problem that it's out it's not out meanwhile the Momodora series is a pretty good option Toho Lunion Knights might be a, an interesting option too some of these games are a little bit different uh, styles of games uh, Shanti is a pretty good platforming series Cat Maze might be good never heard of it and of course there are no reviews for this product because it's never come out um, again you have a point to mention here that that Japanese developers tend to over promise on their release date and they are way off like, because I have to assume that the planned release date when it says 2018 meant January 1st of 2018 and yeah I'm in May of 2019 so this has to leave the fall list it if this game ever does come out uh, great for him I suppose but that doesn't really mean anything uh, the Steam website has changed how clicking on a developer's name works so I just clicked on that developer's name and it took me to Danjin entertainment the publishers page so I can't search to see if this developer has released anything else on Steam ever um, but yeah and I would not be surprised if this developer actually is still working on this game but that doesn't mean anything it, it it's not anywhere close to being released obviously here's another point to m mention and I know I'm zoomed in quite a bit so I guess I can zoom out a little bit and that probably won't fix too much on the resolution uh, there was something on my follow list that has been completely removed from Steam in fact there was three or four games that have been completely removed from Steam and when that happens it takes you to the front page so 
the only thing I could do, and then we would have to zoom back in. Seems seems like the zoom doesn't want to work. Oh man, that was too much. That was too much zooming. But I have to remind myself: 87% of the RAM being used right now. This computer is running like a Windows XP uh, computer from uh, two decades ago. So all I could assume is that it is something alphabetically after Brave Earth Prologue and before Bright Memory. So it started B R A B C D E F G or H. So it probably was something that had the word bra in it, or as in brave. Uh, I can't really think of anything else that would start B-R-A. But there's really no way to go back and search that without actually looking at my entire list of the games on the fall list. There might still be an indicator uh, in the fall list that of what the name is. Uh, the reasons are very short that the game is completely removed from Steam. It's either at the request of the developer or the publisher, because there has been some kind of copyright claim, like a Digital Millennium Copyright Act claim, a DMCA claim, or because the developer, publisher, or the content itself violated some rule or standard of Steam of which Steam doesn't really want to enforce too many rules or standards, so uh, unless it was just horribly illegal or objectionable or their description was straight up trolling, they wanted to leave all games on their storefront because it makes them money. Like Steam Valve, at least for the moment, uh, despite many, many people telling them to do the opposite, and I, I kind of don't agree with that opinion, uh, Valve wants to have everything possible for sale on their storefront so that they can get their 30% cut. That's just how it goes. Um, now this game, Bright Memory Early Access, is a really, really nice looking game that's only about five minutes long. It's also a Chinese game, so you would probably best describe it as a vertical slice of a game and it got mainstream coverage people liked it uh, it's definitely playable right now you can see 91 percent in the last 30 days of 106 reviews are positive 93 percent of 7369 reviews are positive those are big numbers for reviews uh, it is in still early access uh, though and it's six dollars and 99 cents this also is potentially uh, a great thing for the chinese market because the more examples we see of complete reasonably priced well-made and well-selling chinese games i think that there can be some real leaders in china to push a lot of developers that make low effort bad games. It's also worth mentioning that video game consoles have been illegal in China for a very long time. They're not anymore. And China was for a very long time the land of the NES clones, uh, clone consoles. So uh, Famicom clone consoles is what they would be called, uh, Famiclones. So, for decades upon decades, what people thought the quality of games were, were things like Super Mario Brothers. Uh, even late into the 90s, maybe even early in the 2000s. So now that the internet has made things easier to see and, and people can see, oh no, AAA games look hyper-realistic and amazing and they look like a game like this, uh, this game looks that's what they have to strive to 
and that's a lot of catch up that that game developers in China are going to have to work on and so as far as bright memory it's going to stay on the fall list because I, I have a lot of hope in it uh, I could put it on the wish list but there's there's kind of no reason to it's still early access it's going to be redeveloped as uh, episode one well it was called episode one originally and it's being redeveloped uh, now and see you can see March 31st there's a, a update uh, but also they're trying to sell a different game called Bright Memory Infinite so this might very well uh, turn into a bait and switch a scenario so we'll have to see how this is sold and what the price really is and what you're actually getting because if it if they've changed what was bright memory episode one to just be called bright memory um, um, bright memory alone and then they're also working on doing pre-work on bright memory infinite so they seem to be all over the board instead of just focusing in on one game and calling it one episode or one name frankly they should have just left it as bright memory episode one and then removed the episode one after it came out of early access as one big announcement like the game is ready it's coming out of early access oh and by the way it's not episode one anymore it's a full game but yeah that should just stay on the wish list which means I should just close the tab next we have bring to life uh, so we still have probably a decent number of games now that I th think about it uh, it's 70% positive of 20 reviews it's a VR puzzle horror stealth game I don't know if VR horror games would ever be a smart idea uh, I feel like the the dangers that you're going to fall over or you're going to swing at something that's not there and break break either your hand or the controller or something in your room uh, and I just don't think most people even fans of horror games like I love horror games they don't ever scare me I'm not sure I'd be super happy being immersed in a 3d environment in a horror game uh, that being said this game doesn't look amazingly scary $19.99 let's see what the reviews are if there's any negative ones lots of wandering around in an almost pitch black dungeon crawler environment opening doors find bits and pieces in order to progress I would say no for one personal reason lack of smooth locomotion on my Vive trackpad uh, there's another review. I was excited for this game. The hype was there. It was a good trailer. Graphics are decent, but they're asking way too much for this game. In my opinion, the, these are the reasons. So it's too expensive. There's no smooth locomotion in VR. Transparency. They got it for free. Jump scares check. Spooky atmosphere check. Um, so there's a decent amount of negative reviews here. And I'm not visually impressed by this game either. Also, this is not tagged as requiring uh, VR. So, let's see. It does have a non-VR version. So if this was a good, better game, I'd be happy for that and say, Yeah, sure, I'll play the non-VR version. But what is killing me is this. This is just not animated in a way that I find spooky or just even textured well it's just too smooth it's like it's made out of clay and then this is questionable light puzzles as possibly the only gameplay mechanic otherwise and yeah yep I'm not impressed enough this again does not look good so this is gonna leave the follow list 
Next, we have a game called Broken Reality, which is a surreal walking simulator. A, walk, a humorous adventure set in a 3D parody of the internet, diverse puzzles, beautiful worlds, friends experiencing experiences, upgrades, and more to all those who log on. Hmm. So, a lot of things get labeled as surreal when really it's just a bunch of weirdness and asset flips. Um, now, I, it would be basically a artistic debate to say that weird does not equal surreal at some times. But it definitely feels like sometimes in these games they have just random, ram randomly placed items, randomly done things. Um, this is a game where you have to, I think, thumbs up other people. NPCs in the world to get cool points and yeah this just seems like a mess of an idea I I would take this visual aesthetic which I frankly don't like it's it's just too too much neon but then I would need to see a gameplay mechanic behind it and that's what I'm not seeing when you, when it's called a walking simulator an adventure game you know it has kind of a photography mode. Uh, this was actually covered by Giant Bomb. Uh, briefly. And then... It, it's, it's... The other the other game this developer made was Shao, Shaolin vs. Wu-Tang. $14.99. see if the reviews say anything. Cynical, that's what this game felt like to me. Maybe... It, that was the point maybe it wasn't honestly I couldn't tell you it's a lot of positive reviews but I feel like the weirdness factor is probably over reacting that there's only four negative reviews out of 209 that's questionable in itself hmm it's weird, neither brilliant, neither nor terribly horrible, it's just meh. And see, there's a game called Jazz Punk that I think is also still going in the surreal aspect, but it has an actual gameplay behind it. Uh, and there's just some other things. Or if you want a walking simulator, some of the, there are some other walking simulators that make a little bit more sense if you're trying to go for a story hmm. but clearly Kotaku, Rock Paper Shotgun and IGN all decided to play this game and review, review it in at least a sentence uh, which is not something that happens to all games for sure so really really high positive rating but I think I'm out yeah Th this again might just boil down to this as a game for a different class of people a different type of people people uh, who have a different sense of humor but yeah I'm just not seeing a game here as much as just a weird experience so that's it okay Bubsy paws on fire now why is this rated positive at 87 percent because from what I've been hearing for several months now is every single Bubsy game is terrible Bubsy games have always been terrible and that somebody is either kickstarting these so that they keep making them or somebody crazy is funding the development of these games and that's why they keep getting made $24.99 for this so I want to look at these reviews and who the see who these lunatics are that are rating this um, hmm. it's an auto runner that consists of 24 levels maybe this is uh, maybe this is the one good Bubsy game um, This is no joke, the game is fantastic. Hmm. So maybe the other Bubsy games 
um, are the bad ones and an auto scroller was within the realm of what the developers could do hmm how this is an auto scroller game though it's kind of question well it's from the makers of runner 3 which might be bit trip runner 3 or maybe just there's a game called runner 3 hmm so yeah it does seem like you are always moving forward and this doesn't look terrible the problem though is if this is the one get uh, one good game because it's made by a different developer in the Bubsy series who cares I had not even heard of Bubsy a, a year ago and because it was such a third-rate old uh, and unknown game $24.99 this is leaving the follow list yeah I don't it, even if this was a hundred percent positive and it had a thousand reviews uh, I am getting off the train as far as Bubsy is concerned next we have bug splat I kind of wanted to cover this game but again not enough reviews and I guess this really is just something that would be a funny mini game uh, and not something you'd really want to play for a long time also particularly when you're controlling a uh, a mouse to control all of this that's gonna be annoying so you just you know smashing or shooting with a shotgun this game bugs it's a clicker by its own description it's two dollars and 99 cents hmm so let's see what the reviews are although do I really need to look at the reviews because I think it's pretty obvious that even if it was two very positive reviews and it seems like they're not gonna load anyways uh, I shouldn't put it on the fall list if it was two very negative uh, reviews I shouldn't keep it on the fall list so this was a game that was under consideration I would also point out that there's not anything exactly like it as far as I have seen on Steam and I think it's somewhat fair to say I've probably seen most of all the games available on Steam uh, but yeah nope no other bug splatting games so that'll leave the follow list next was was this really the next game yes it is we have bully beatdown which is a beat em up game where you're beating up bullies bullies being depicted as people in uh, either varsity jackets or black t-shirts and looking like rockers and then apparently there's a hell level where you beat up demons um, I thought this might be a slightly interesting idea uh, of a game but quite frankly in today's modern age I think this becomes more problematic and more of a troll game than anything else and see if you looked at this game for a second and thought oh this is just like the Simpsons arcade game that's true but even then when the Simpsons arcade game came out you're not usually beating up children or uh, even if you are playing as children you're usually building beating up adults um, this just seems like this is a school rampage simulator or it could at least be de described as that um, and so yeah I don't think you can do this gag well you I think you might have to jump through a lot of hoops to do this gag and see I have the game bully from uh, Rocksteady or Rockstar uh, the creators of Grand Theft Auto and I'm 
I'm questioning if I could, if maybe I shouldn't play that game, uh, just for dangers of YouTube not liking it. Uh, and that also certainly explains why there's no Bully 2 that ever came out, although Rocksteady. I will also admit I played this game Save Jesus and that was a terrible piece of garbage game. So if this is all from the same developers, Almighty Games, then this is almost certainly a troll game and not a good game. 48 Steam achievements is way too many achievements, so it's an achievement troll game. And sure, um, and sure, you will get a decent number of people recommending your game if it's a troll game or if it's an achievement game. Uh, but I see here that, yeah, this is not something I want to play, particularly since it's from this developer. Uh, so moving on. Also, I think it's worth mentioning that the troll games and joke games don't really get you a lot of YouTube views. Uh, frankly, nothing does as a small YouTube uh, content creator, but uh, yeah, the troll and joke games only seem to work so well for big and mid-tier streamers who already have a fan base where they can take you on a ride to watch a game you've never heard of before so next we have a game called burden of proof it's inspired by ace attorney and danganronpa danganronpa is on steam and has been for a while and ace attorney has just been added to steam or at least the first three ace attorney games have been added to steam there might be more that haven't been added uh, this looks interesting it also kind of looks empty and asset flippy uh, you have a difference here between these court scenes and the the zoomed in sections and then you have sections where it's really just a big empty area and that would just be production mistakes quite frankly if you set everything in smaller areas you wouldn't have to animate as much uh, look at this courtroom just as an example there's really no reason to have more than two rows or three rows you could have eliminated a couple of rows and zoom the camera in so you didn't see anybody in the in the gallery anyways um, this is from an unknown developer. It's fourteen dollars and ninety-nine cents. Let's see what people have to say. Uh, great game. Doesn't even resemble re real courtroom action or investigative work. Ridiculous leaps of logic, absurd storyline, and idiotic characters. That would be very much in line with Ace Attorney. The interface is annoying, and the screen shake is just stupid. At least it can be disabled in the options. Uh, I finally got sick of it in the second chapter and quit playing waste of $15 uh, and then you have somebody else feels just like Ace Attorney so uh, I think that negative review probably does need to be ignored because they didn't know what they were getting that being said we could play Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy for $29.99 uh, and that definitely should be on my follow list or wish list. Hmm. hmm. This is a weird game, and I think it deserves to be on the wish list as a secondary backup. When I cover games on my YouTube channel, uh, sometimes I'll play something that's well known, and then I'll play something that is inspired by it or. Or similar to it this would be a great example where I could play Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney trilogy and then play burden of proof and go here's a fan game uh, of a similar style uh, so yeah I think that that deserves to go to the fall to the wish list now that being said 
probably would not buy this before I bought Ace Attorney or and maybe Danganronpa. I don't know how much of Danganronpa really you would need to play. Um, and I probably wouldn't buy it without a pretty big discount too. Um, next we have a game called Burn Down that came out February 7th, 2019. It's still in early access and it has two user reviews. This is a early access, early access racing action game. Uh, there's a pretty steady stream of racing games that come out and, or promise to come out. So I think this one has missed its window. Uh, there's probably at least half a dozen other racing games either on the wish list or on the fall list that are trying to offer the same thing. Uh, that video, for example, did not show any car actually racing, which is problematic when making a racing video. And yeah, I don't see enough here to, to make this a unique or um, interesting game. It looks like it might be more car combat than actual racing, uh, but Twisted Metal, this definitely is not. Uh, early access again too early so it's apparently at 0.2.7 by their count so yeah this needs to leave the fall list it's not coming out anytime soon here we have a student project called burning daylight unfortunately it's tagged with nudity and sexual content so we have to do a little bit of blurring here uh, the problem with this game is you play the first half of the game and it's a very short little demo not wearing any pants as a male and by pants I mean uh, underwear and outerwear and so that's a problem there's a later section where you're seeing acts of, of sexual intercourse in the background it's just not friendly for YouTube uh, quite frankly it's a free game that that much I can tell you but um, it's it's also a student project uh, unfortunately I guess I put this on the wish list well it's free so I leave it on the follow list because it's free to play um, and it probably will just sit there forever because unless YouTube changes its policies or allows you allows different types of content this is not a game I could show it's not much of a game to show off in the first place so um, so it, you're probably you probably better off just downloading it and playing it yourself if you're interested because it will take you less than an hour next we have Camp W which means we are at the seas and so we will start on C in the next recording uh, this has worked out a lot better than the first recording that was very much a mess with none of the screenshots loading and just having problems with so much RAM being taken up by the browser I should not have opened all of the tabs at once uh, I should have broken it up by letter and I will take that to heart and do that going forward uh, next time there's a cleanup that needs to be done we only had about seven games that are being added to the wish list starting with the letter B Baldur's Gate Beyond the Sky Blind Girl Bloodlust Shadowhunter Blueprint Ward Bomb Chicken and Burden of Proof and what's interesting to point out here is three of those games are not games that are on the fall list right now instead they are predecessor games to things that were on the fall list Baldur's Gate 2 was on the fall list uh, Bloodlust Shadowhunter 2 was on the fall list where uh, Blueprint Ward 
classroom was on the fall list. Um, so we've gone back to the predecessor games. Um, and yeah, this is still taking a lot of time. Uh, two hours to go through one letter is, is a lot longer than I thought this was going. I, I stupidly and, and without thinking about it thought I might be able to in less than three hours cover all of these games but that's not going to happen because every game has to actually be considered now I could certainly just control tab through all these tabs and go yeah nah uh, but would I be giving them a fair shake at that point would I really be considering it would I be looking at reviews no I wouldn't so this is their opportunity to impress me and make it to the wish list or to disimpress me or unimpress me and thus be put back just alongside all other steam games that i'm not interested in buying or i'm not aware that i'm interested in buying uh, that's going to be it for this recording as always i ask you to like share subscribe comment and watch every second of my videos if you want a friend or follow me on any social media sites, there's a bunch of links down below. Make sure when you subscribe, you click that notification bell for any channel you subscribe to if you want to actually get notifications. And if you want to support me further, which would be very helpful, there is a link to Patreon, or you could friend me on Steam and gift me a game off my wish list, or gift me a gift card. Uh, the Steam Summer Sale is coming up as of this recording so uh, well I guess maybe these videos won't come out until way after that probably come to think of it well that that's an opportunity for next year I suppose <laughs> thank you for watching have a good evening